Hey everyone, this is Baylor from Scooby Dooby Doo on YouTube, and in this video, I want to show you how to learn PHP. Well, not how to learn, but learning PHP. Kind of like just the way just learning PHP. There'll be a couple of videos on learning PHP from scratch. So it kind of yeah. So that's what we're going to do, and uh, so I'm kind of doing this with an all with expecting you already have your own server. Uh, you know, just like. Uh, I'm using example for Macintosh, but you could do whatever you want to do. Um, just make sure you have a server of some sort. You can do a free host online. You can do whatever you want. Uh, you just need some way to write PHP. So after you've done that, you can continue watching this video. Or you can watch it without that. I don't really know if you just want to watch it for fun. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I have my editor open. You can see I'm using TextMate. Now, this program is only available for Macs. If you're using Windows, there's a text editor E. I think it's like E dash text editor, something like that. You can search for TextMate on Windows if you really want to use this editor. Basically, what I'm going to do is create a new file. We'll call this file index.php. And uh, what I want to do is kind of show you how to write PHP. So normally, what you would do is you're. I'm expect. I'm kind of. I, there's a lot of things kind of expected. Um, I'm kind of. I kind of think. I, I. It's recommended that you watch this video if you know HTML. Now you don't have to know HTML is not a very complicated language, and you can pick that up in less than a week because there's not a lot to it. I don't think there may be, but basically, what I'm going to do is kind of show you an HTML tag. So if I was trying to write something like this. Um, let's just say I had this text is bold. To make that text bold, what you would do is you would just kind of create your open tag and say bold. Then you'd come over here and you'd close your bold tag like that. Okay, so that's pretty basic. You probably already know that. And if I come back over here and reload, and say I get this text is bold. Okay, well, PHP is actually similar to that, whether you know it or not. Um, we need to start PHP. So let's just kind of go push that down a few lines. And what I'm going to do is start PHP. So I'm going to run my start tag. And I'm going to add a question mark. And I'm going to say PHP. Now that actually starts PHP. And now you can see that all this text below is kind of screwed up because my text editor is like, you started PHP and now you're writing HTML. What are you doing? Um, but what we need to do is close PHP. And the way we do that is we add a question mark and a tag, one of the, an ending tag. Okay, so now you can see that this little snip, these three lines here, are actually PHP lines, and after that, we can do whatever we want, just normal HTML and text. Okay, so now if I reload my browser, you can see I still have this text is bold. If I view the source, you can see it's been pushed down a few lines, but we cannot actually see the PHP. And that's because PHP doesn't run in the browser. So a browser is something like Safari, and Google Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, um, oh, Opera, Oprah. O I think it's Opera, not Oprah. I don't, I don't think anybody calls it that except for me now, but I generally don't. Um, so a browser is just what you use to go to websites like Google.com and YouTube and things like that. So... Whenever browsers see this, they only get this part, and that's because this part's rendered in the browser. PHP is rendered on a server, and a ser server is—I don't even want—I'm not going to give you some boring definition of a server. Basically, PHP runs before it actually opens in the browser. I know that's kind of weird, and but it's just the way it works. It's called a server-side language. It doesn't run in the browser. So whatever we do in PHP is not run actually in the browser. The browser just gets what PHP returns. Okay, so with that said, we could go ahead and start trying to write some PHP code. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go inside of this, inside of my PHP tags, and I want to show you something. In PHP, you can't just write text. You can't just say, hello world, because if I do this, I'm going to come back over here so you can see a PHP error. If I reload, you can see it's trying to tell me some unexpected string. Okay, well, I... A string is, I guess I need to show, tell you about that now. A string is just like a text, okay? You may hear people say, this is a string of text. Well, that's because this is just, a string is, um, you have integers, integers, a number. A uh, string is just text, like letters and numbers and things like that. Something like a sentence or a word. 
Okay, so it's saying unexpected string. Well, that's because PHP doesn't just let you write your HTML or your code just inside of PHP. You have to tell PHP, hey, this, this point of the script, I want you to actually put something on the page. So the way we do that is we use a function called echo. Now there are two or three functions that do this, but this is the more popular one that I use and recommend. So we're gonna use echo, and what we're gonna do is we wanna say, we wanna echo, hello world. The way we do that is we say echo, and after that we put a quote. Now you can do single quotes or double quotes. I usually use single quotes, but here we're gonna say we wanna echo out, hello world. Now we need to tell PHP that we're done using this echo. So what we're gonna do is at the very end, after our quotes, we're gonna add a semicolon. So I'll add that here, and I'm gonna save my file, and I'm gonna come back over here and reload. And you can see we have hello world. And if I view the source, you can see we only have hello world displayed on this page in the source code. And that's because PHP ran and it said, send this to the browser, tell the browser that it needs to display some text, hello world. Okay, so that's actually how you put something on the page in index and PHP. You just simply put, you, you actually use echo. Well, the next thing I really need to show you is kind of like how do you, like a variable, okay? So I'm trying to give you a, a rounded understanding of PHP and the way it works because you there's a lot of things in PHP that you'll see. Okay, so here we have a, a string of text where that we have this hello world. And we're actually echo, echoing that on the page. Well, the next thing you need to know about are variables. And you'll use variables like in, <laughs> it's almost impossible not to use variables. I think it would be impossible except for like in this case where I've done this very basic thing. But uh, a variable is just a way that you can store text and numbers and things like that. And the way you write a variable is you add a dollar sign. And uh, here you'll put, I don't know the amount, the the, set, the type of characters. Um, you, you have to start it with letters, so A through Z, capital, or lowercase. But here I'm going to just call mine, my name. And here you can see that I was able to put an underscore in there. I don't know all the characters that you're able to use. Um, I would generally just try to keep it to alpha numeric numbers if you don't know what that means it's like a through z and then zero through one nine okay alpha and numeric and then uh underscores okay and dash. no you can't use dashes okay so those are the those are the symbols that you can use when you create a variable you can't start it with a number it has to start with letters or an underscore anyways i'm going to call this variable my name and what we do is we say my name is equal to, and here we'll put in single quotes, Baylor. Okay, because that's my name, and you can see that I ended this with a semicolon. And that's because you have to end everything that you do in a semicolon, just about. Like, there are a few exceptions, but we won't touch on them in this video. We may do that in the next video. Okay, so here you can say I said my name is equal to Baylor. What I want to do is put this on the page. So if I just reload my browser now, hit this reload button, nothing happens, I view the source, and there's nothing there. Well, that's because variables don't automatically echo. Variables are like silent little things that hold text and numbers and all sorts of stuff. So the way we actually put that on the page is we actually run an echo. So we'll say echo my name. So here you can see that I'm actually calling this variable with a dollar sign and everything, and that's because this time we're not saying equal, we're just saying we need to get that value. And the value in this case is Baylor. So now if I reload, you can see I have Baylor. I actually put that on the page. So what we could do now after that is we could, um, we need to say, let's do something like this. What if we wanted to say, hello, my name is Baylor. That's pretty basic. That's something you would, you would want to do. So what we could do, there, there are lots of ways we could do this. The first way I'm going to show you is kind of more an embedding PHP. Okay, so what I'm going to do, so I'm going to come down below and I'm going to remove some of these line breaks. By the way, line breaks really don't have anything to do. They don't affect PHP. You could add as many line breaks. I, I, I had the patience, I could add 100 line breaks here. But I don't really have the patience and I don't think you do either. So I'm not going to do that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and say, hello, my name is 
And here what I'm going to do is echo out my name. So here I have this little snippet where if I type in PHP and hit tab, you can see it automatically starts my PHP. And what I can do here is say echo my name. We'll add that with a semicolon. And if I come back over here and reload, you can see I have hello, my name is Baylor. So you can see that when you create a variable, as long as you call that variable, which what I'm doing here, this echo, I'm calling that variable. If you try to call the variable after you set it, which I'm doing here, so here I'm setting a variable, here I'm calling it, you can call it in separate PHP blocks. So here I have a block of PHP, and I also have another block of PHP here. Okay, so you can actually call PHP, or these variables, in different blocks of pages. And you can even call it in separate files, but we won't get into that. Okay, kind of. It's not like I can create a file over here and say, echo my name. You have to do something else, but I'm not going to touch on that in this video. Okay, so here I've actually echoed my name, and that's what I wanted to show you. So I can do this. I don't have. I'm not limited to running this variable in here. I didn't have to say my name equals Baylor again. You know, I didn't have to do that. Okay, so what's the second way that we can do this? Another way we could do this is inside of this PHP block, we could create an echo, and I could say one of my single quotes say hello. My name is space. So you can say I'm adding a space here. And what I want to do is append my variable. So to do that, what I'm going to do is add a period. And I'm going to type in my name. And then you can say I've ended that with a semicolon. So in appending, when you append something, basically what we're doing is we're saying here's some text. And we want to append my name to this. So what I can do now is if I come back over here and reload, you can see I still have, hello, my name is Baylor. Nothing changes, except this time it's all being run with PHP, and we're not actually separating our PHP blocks. So that's very simple. It's very easy to do. All we, The only thing you really need to remember is that you ha we had to append it with the period. And now you can you don't have to add the space. Some people don't add spaces, and if I don't, if I, uh, sorry about that. If I reload, you can see nothing's changed, even though I've removed the spaces. It's all user pre or user preference sounds kind of weird. Um, it's all just whatever you like to do. I like spaces. Um, I like to separate my st my actual text here. So what's another thing we can do? Well, here I showed you if I did single quotes, I was able to append my variable. Well, if you use double quotes, you don't have to append a variable. So I'm just going to remove this. I'm going to remove my quotes. Okay. And I'm just going to, this is a little thing I can do with text space. If I make a selection and hit double, my, hit my quotes key, you can see it automatically wrapped it. That's just the thing of text space. Normally, you'd have to add a quote here and come to the very end and add another quote. Okay, so here you can see I was able to add this in quote, double quotes. If I reload, it's just going to cut off my name, but that's not a big deal. So I'll reload here. You can see I have my hello, my name is Baylor. What I can do because I did this in double quotes is because I'm doing an echo, I can just type in my name like that. And you can see now it's highlighted in blue. That's just part of a text editor with syntax highlighting. Basically, I know that I'm typing in a variable here. And if I come back over here and reload, you can see I have, well, sorry about that. My server's down. Don't worry if I just reload again. Hopefully, <laughs> I'm sorry about all these confusions here, or these little interruptions. But here you can see that with this script, this hello world, my name is Baylor. If I come back over here and reload again, you can see I get hello, my name is Baylor. Okay, and I didn't actually have to do an, an appending, or I didn't have to append anything. I can still append text, so I could say, and uh, actually I did that in single quotes. Yeah, you see, I, you can actually do single quotes, so um, test. If I can make over here and reload, you can see I still have test, and even though I did this in single quotes and this in double quotes. Okay, so PHP is very versatile. You're, you're not really limited. Um so that's that's that. The next thing I want to do, and I'm getting, I'm going to close this video in a second. I'm going to add, I'm going to do basic math functions because math is very fun. So what I'm going to do is create, I'm going to say num1, and I'll make that equal to 10. And I'll say num2 is also equal to 10. Okay, so here I'm storing two variables, both with different numbers. Now PHP is not very, is very loose, okay? I can wrap this in quotes, and it still knows this is a number. Okay, you're not you like some languages. I don't, I don't, I can't think of them off the top of my head. But you have to be very specific and say this is an integer and this is a string. Okay, 
PHP is not like that. I can just make I could make this a string, and I could and then I could replace it with a number, and PHP would automatically change it. But here I could say echo num1 plus num2. And when I when I reload my page now, you can see that I get 20. That's because we added num1 and num2. What I could also do is I could just say my sum is equal to num1 plus num2. And if I echo out my sum, let's add a line break here so we can kind of separate that. When I come back over here and reload now, you can see I still get 20. Okay, so PHP is very versatile. If I wrap that in quotes and reload, you can see I still get 20. You don't have to, you could add, that's something I didn't talk about. Normal text, so if I said num2 or num3, I guess, is equal to hello world, like that, you can't you can't do that. Characters like alf, number, or letters, anything that's not a number has to be wrapped in quotes. Okay, so this has to be wrapped in quotes because it's not a number. But uh, numbers don't have to be wrapped in quotes. I should have told you that. But now you know that this doesn't have to be wrapped in quotes. Okay, so thanks for watching this video. And in the next video, we'll, make, we'll do a little bit more. And uh, so goodbye.